What's up guys, my name is Matthew, and today I'm gonna to be telling you my favorite books of all time. All right, I've been on BookTube for a year now, and more and more people in my real life who know me personally are figuring out that I have a YouTube channel where I talk about books, and I've, you know, gotten like positive, you know, oh my God, that's so cool. I wanna start reading. I wanna learn more books. I wanna, what, what do you recommend? And every time I'm like, well, you know, you could always just go watch my videos. I've decided that I wanna create a video with all of my favorite books with my thrillers, my romance, literary fiction, and like I have a one like self-help book that I would talk about. But my purpose of this is when people text me asking for book recommendations, I can literally just send them this video because this these are the books that I recommend to my friends. People who know me personally, like oh, I wanna read more thrillers, I wanna read more romance. This is the list that I give them. If you have been watching my videos, I think a lot of these you will see coming. You will know this won't be a groundbreaking video for you. If you're new here, Please subscribe, like, leave a comment. Is that what YouTubers say? I don't know. But um, I am excited. I'm gonna start with the thrillers, then go to the romance, then go to literary fiction. Of course, we like things to be efficient here, so I will have timestamps. You will not hurt my feelings if you skip parts and only listen to the books you wanna hear about. I will break it down by genres, and let's jump into it. All right, for thrillers, the first book I'm gonna tell you about is one of the most popular thrillers of all time. If you are lucky enough to have never read this or been spoiled by the movie, the movie is very good. I would recommend Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This book will get you into thrillers. I think it's just very easy to read. That twist in the middle of the book is fantastic. So shocking, love it. So this is one, if you're brand new to reading, you have never picked up a thriller, you wanna get into the thriller genre and you have not been spoiled to the fantastic twist in this book, I would recommend Gone Girl. This is about a couple named Nick and Amy, and we get certain chapters from Amy's diary where she's telling about how they met, their relationship, their struggles, their highs, and then when the book opens up with Amy disappearing. It looks like their house got ransacked, it looks like she got kidnapped, and the story is kind of dealing with, is the husband to blame? Did the husband kill her? Who killed her? Is she dead? What happened? And this is just the quintessential thriller with that twist we like in a thriller. But yeah, this is the one that I would recommend to someone who is brand new to reading, never picked up a book, needs a book that will have them gripped, easy to read with a good twist. Like I said, I know most of you have probably read this book, but this is definitely one I would recommend to a new reader, to my friend. If a friend was asking me to start, I would start with Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl. An author that I always recommend to people looking for thriller books who are kind of new to thrillers is Riley Sager. He's one of my favorite thriller authors. And although I did not like his last two books, his first four books are really good. The first two I gave four stars. This one and Lock Every Door I gave five stars. He just does a really good job at the twist. That twist that like you, you feel satisfied after reading it because he you got got, he tricked you. But I decided like between Lock Every Door and Home Before Dark, I do tend to favor this one because it has all the haunted house vibes and I just love the atmosphere of this book. This is a book is about a girl named Maggie who when she was little, her mom and her dad and her moved into this big old house named Bainberry Hall. It has all the haunted house vibes, very spooky, very old. And one night they fled from the house because it was haunted, they thought ghosts, and the parents really never talk about it. But her dad wrote a book explaining all the weird things that their family experienced in this haunted house. We flash forward 25 years and Maggie inherits the house because her dad passed away and she moves back in, trying to do a fixer-upper and kind of the ghostly things start happening again. And you're getting alternating chapters from the book that the dad wrote. So you're reading about all the creepy things that happened to this family in the past. But then you're getting present day chapters from Maggie, who's coming back to the house, fixing it up, figuring out what really happened that night that her whole family fled from the house. I love this book because of this, the whole time you're thinking, is this a paranormal book? Am I reading a ghost story? Or is there a logical explanation for everything that happened in the past and in the present? I'm not gonna tell you whether it's rational or whether it's paranormal, go into it not knowing. But yeah, this is one that I always recommend. I think it's fantastically done. Is that a word? I don't know. And this book has four twists at the end. Like you think that book's ending, and he just like keeps on like throwing curveballs. I just love the way it all wrapped up. And yeah, I really like this book. It's one of, it's probably my favorite thriller book. And that's why I always say Riley Sager, I will read anything he writes, because even though his latest books aren't the best, he has put out some fantastic thrillers. So if you are looking for a thriller and you've not jumped on Home Before Dark, I would definitely recommend this. The next thriller book you guys are sick and tired of me talking about if you watch my videos regularly, and that is In My Dreams I Hold a Night. This was my favorite thriller of 2021. I'm always pushing it down people's throats, and I just love 
the college vibe of this book. And this book has my favorite trope in a thriller, which is dual timelines with a group of college friends who are all super close, but then something tragic happens, usually someone dies. And then we flash forward 10 years and the group of friends are getting back together. And the group of friends realize, hmm, maybe what we thought happened 10 years ago isn't the truth. Maybe the person who got accused of killing the person is not actually the killer. Maybe the accident was actually a murder. And you have dual timelines with figuring out what happened in the past, what happened in the present, and you're kind of putting the mystery together. And it's just my favorite way to tell a story, like a thriller story. And this is probably my favorite one with that trope, and it's in my dreams I hold a knife. This is about a girl named Jessica Miller, who was at this Northeastern University, which she had a group of seven friends. They were called the Elite Seven, I think. And they were super close, but one day, one of their friends got murdered. And one of the seven friends got accused of being the murderer, went to jail. And now all the friends are coming back to the university for their college reunion. Things start surfacing where you realize, wait, maybe that person who got accused of killing our friend wasn't the actual person who killed our friend. And you're dealing with the dual timelines of what happened back in college. You're dealing with the present day of them at this college reunion. And it is my favorite, favorite thriller. And I love it. I push it down everyone's throats. So if this is one I definitely recommend to friends, especially if they're looking for that college -y vibe, because this gives you all the college -y vibes. And I absolutely adore it. The next thriller I always recommend to people, not always, but depending on the person and depending on you know what their interests are, I do recommend Defending Jacob. This is the only book I've ever read in one day. Like, woke up one Saturday morning, started reading this book, did not plan to read it all in one day, but I just couldn't put it down. I was so consumed in this little world, and I finished the book in one day, and it was fantastic. There's also an Apple TV show. The endings on the Apple TV show and this book are different. What is this book about? This book is about a guy named Andy who is an assistant district attorney in this Massachusetts town. And one day he realizes his 14 year old son, Jacob, gets accused of murdering a fellow classmate. And throughout the book, you're learning about like what it's like being a parent of someone who was accused of murder. Did Jacob actually kill the kid? What really happened? There's a lot of legal jargon in this book because he is an ADA, so we're getting like scenes from the courtroom. We're putting the pieces together. And what I think the strongest part of this book is the family dynamics and how this is definitely more so a family drama than a thriller. But it's really thought provoking. There's also this topic of the murder gene, and that's all I'm going to say because this book goes into that. And you know whether you know the nest, like the instinct to kill. That's probably not the yeah, the correct way to say that. But the desire to murder someone is genetic. And this book explores that. And I just really like reading books where the parents are struggling with how do you handle a situation where you love your kids so much but your kid might be evil. And I just absolutely adored this book. I read it in one day, like I said, and I definitely recommend it if you haven't. I prefer this over the TV show. I've watched them both, but I, mean, I usually do prefer the books over the TV shows and the movies. But this is one I just adore. And I keep meaning to read more books by William Landry, but I just haven't. But yes, I definitely recommend Defending Jacob to most of my friends if they're looking for a book. The next book I tend to recommend my friends is Playing Nice by J.P. Delaney. This is one that will make you really think, make you really angry while you're reading it because it's about this situation where both of these families took home little boys from the hospital and they find out like three years later when the boys are, you know, able, I think it's three, they're able to talk and then, you know, they've lived with these kids for so long, they realize that the babies got swapped at the hospital. So they've been living with the wrong kid for the last three years. This, these families are put in this situation where, what do we do? Like, do we swap them back? Do we try to take turns with them? And they're just trying to like figure out what to do in this situation. And why it's a thriller is because one of the characters in this book is the worst human being I've ever read. He makes me viscerally angry. And I can still like, just like, like I remember my emotions during this book because I was so frustrated. So like, what would I do in this situation? Because it's so tragic, so traumatizing. The last part of the book is very, very thrilling. I love how this book ends. But yeah, this is one, like I said, it's more of a family drama, kind of like Defending Jacob, where there are thrilling moments, but you're really just sucked into like this, what would you do if your kids were swapped at birth? And how do you handle the situation? How do you handle working with these other adults and navigating this experience? And I just love this book so much. Um, and this is one when people are trying to get into books, I'm like, have you read Playing Nice? And I tell them about it and they're like, oh wait, that sounds really interesting. And I'm like, it is. That's why I'm recommending it to you. 
but this is another one that I definitely recommend if you haven't read it yet. I don't hear much about this book on booktube. Maybe it's because it came out a few years ago, so it was all the hype before I came on booktube, but I definitely recommend this one if you haven't read it, regardless if you like thrillers or not, because it's very well done and very thought-provoking. The next one of my favorite thrillers that I tend to recommend friends is Who is Maude Dixon? This is a very recent read. I read it in May of this year. It didn't come out this year, but I read it this year. And it's about a girl named Florence who works in publishing and she takes a job with the mysterious Maude Dixon. Maude Dixon is the author of a very famous book, but it's a pseudonym and no one really knows the true identity of Maude Dixon. So she, Florence, gets the job with Maude Dixon. We learn about Maude Dixon. We learn about Maude Dixon trying to plan and write a new book. And the first three-fourths of this book are not thrilling. It almost reads more of like a literary fiction, but I was so captivated by it. And by the time you get to the fourth portion of the book, it is hardcore thriller, all the thrills, all the twists, and it is just so well done. This is definitely gonna be one of my favorite thrillers of 2022. I just absolutely adore it. And it's a quick, easy read. It's only like 200 and, well, it's 300 pages, but it's still very easy to read. I read it super fast. But yeah, we're really dealing with this idea of who is Maude Dixon? How is Florence navigating being a personal assistant to Maude Dixon? They go to Africa to start writing so Maude Dixon can write their next book. And it is fantastic and I highly recommend it. The twists at the end are wild and it just turns into like such a wild ride. So if you're reading this book and you're like, this is not really a thriller, wait till the end because I promise you it will give you all the thrills that you normally see in a thriller book. So those are the thrillers that are my favorite that I tend to recommend friends. I have some friends who are not into thrillers, but they're more into romance. So I'm gonna go into the romance books that I tend to recommend to them, depending on their interests and depending on what they're looking for. I have read all three of Hen Emily Henry's adult books and People We Meet On Vacation is definitely my favorite. This is about two best friends, Poppy and Alex, and we're getting chapters from all of their vacations. Each year they go on a vacation together, they travel to different parts of the country, of the world from what I remember. Something happened where the two friends stopped talking. So we're getting chapters of the present day where the two friends don't talk, but then we're getting alternating chapters of their vacations and what led up to this big catastrophic thing that they did that ruined the friendship. You're probably guessing right if you think you know what the catastrophic catastrophic thing is, but it's still so well done and the chemistry these best friends have is just fantastic. I've learned that I love the friends to lover trope in a romance book because I just I think it's so good and usually the characters already have so much chemistry. And it was so fun because each chapter is from like a different vacation, so they're a different city doing exciting things in the new city. And I really, really enjoyed it. And this tends to be the first romance book that I um, recommend to friends who are looking for more romance books. I mean, it's Emily Henry. Everyone tends to love Emily Henry, especially the banter she writes between the two characters. She's probably the best romance writer who's good at getting banter with like sexual frustration. She excels at writing banter. But yes, this is the first romance book that I tend to recommend friends that I love that I think they will love too. The next book is not gonna come to a shock. It is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This book is my favorite male-male romance. I'm obsessed with it. I've read it three times. It is coming out on Amazon as a movie. I am super excited. The cast is out, go Google it. I adore this book and I hope that Amazon does a good job at filming this and capturing it. This book is about kind of an alternate universe where a female president won the presidency and we're in the world where we have a female president in the United States and she has a bisexual son named Alex. And Alex kind of like hates or has like a frenemy situation with the Prince of England, Henry. And then the, this book is about Alex and Henry becoming actual friends after not liking each other for so long. And the friends kind of sparks into a romance, but they have to keep it a secret because they don't want it getting out that they're having a male-male relationship especially in the UK. I think like the queen didn't want that. And then Alex's mom doesn't care, but they're all just navigating how to deal with the situation and hide it, keeping it out of the public eye. And they're, oh my God, they're the cutest little characters. I loved their relationship. I, I tell everyone to read this book. I just absolutely adore it. But yeah, it's kind of that rivals to lovers, that forbidden romance trope. And I just absolutely love it. And I wish we got a sequel. Casey McQuiston, please write a sequel because I absolutely adore this book. And I'm so pumped for the new movie that's coming out. The next romance I tend to recommend to friends because I absolutely adore it is not a shock, it is The Hating Game. It's a very, very popular book. I'm sure everyone who's watching this video has already read the book. There is a movie. The movie's actually fantastic. It follows the book very closely. That paintball scene, if you know, you know. But this is about a girl named Lucy and a guy named Josh who work at this publishing house and they are both up for this promotion. So they're kind of like doing a award to figure out who's gonna get the promotion. It is definitely a hate to love book, that, one of the tropes that we love. And this is so cute. You know, they start as enemies. 
and they just progress into something more and just like I said, I just love this because their banter is so, so good. It's so cute. There's just some, some iconic scenes in this book that will stay with you. Like I said, the paint ball scene. But yeah, I usually recommend this for someone who's looking for a romance. They want to feel giddy. You want to feel excited. I would definitely recommend The Hating Game. The next book that I absolutely adore that I tend to recommend to my friends is The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. If you watch my videos, this will not be a shock to you. But this is about two boys named Dave and Charlie. And Dave is a production assistant on this show that is very similar to The Bachelor. Charlie is The Bachelor. He is cast on a, in a show that's very similar to The Bachelor where his job is to go on date with all these women, figure out which one he wants to marry, you know, kick them off, go on little adventures and dates. The issue is Charlie is super awkward. The camera hates him. The show's just not working. So the producer's like, look, Dave, you need to get with Charlie, make him comfortable, make him be more charismatic. He's very attractive, get him out of his shell. And through this process, Dave and Charlie start to experience feelings for each other. And while Charlie's supposed to be marrying a woman on the show, he starts having feelings for his male producer. And it's so adorable, so cute. It does a really good job of exploring mental health because both of the boys help each other with their respective mental illness. And it's just adorable. It's an adorable book, so fun, so camp. I don't know what camp means, but I tend to talk about it in every, <laughs> every video. But it's just, it'll make you feel giddy. It's very well done. The characters you just absolutely adore. And yeah, I definitely recommend The Charm Offensive. And this is definitely one of my favorite romances of all time and one that I always recommend to my friends. Another one of my favorite romances that I don't ever hear people talk about on BookTube and it's such a popular movie. I just don't understand like why it's not talked enough about on BookTube and that is Crazy Rich Asians. I absolutely adore this book. I've read the whole series. The whole series is fantastic. Just love the world, the affluence of all of these characters. And I just, I need to reread these books because I absolutely adore it. The second movie is in production. So we're finally gonna get China Rich Girlfriend, which is the second book. This book, if you haven't seen the movie, is about a girl named Rachel Chu, who is dating this guy named Nicholas Young and they live in New York. And Rachel just thinks that Nicholas Young has a family in Singapore and you know, whatever, you know, doesn't think anything of it. They go to Singapore for Nicholas's cousin's wedding and they get to the airport and everyone's like super like, oh, Mr. Young, this way. And they're sitting in first class and she's like, what's going on? And he's like, okay, so my family might be a little rich. She shows up to Singapore and she shows up at this massive mansion going to these massive parties and she's like, you're not just rich, you are crazy rich. So she had no idea that her boyfriend was incredibly wealthy, coming from an incredibly wealthy family. And she's just navigating, dealing with this very posh um, family who does not want Nicholas to date the American Chinese girl. And it's just so, so cute, so good. But while like the romance is very good too, the side characters in this book are amazing and they're explored in the second and third book. I love being put into this world. Kevin Kwan does a very good job of writing about really affluent communities and just like what it's like being super incredibly wealthy beyond anything we can possibly imagine. I love delving into it. So yeah, I know most of you watching this video has either probably seen the movie or heard about it, but I think y'all are sleeping on this book and this book series. I would definitely recommend it. I do think that the fact that I saw the movie before I read it really helps me out because there's so many characters. Having have faces to characters while reading the book is very helpful. It was really helpful reading the second and third book already knowing all of these characters because there's a lot of them. But yeah, this is such a cute book. It's one of my favorite books and one that I just don't see people talking about. I think we should be talking about this more because it's so well done. And I tend to try to like push my friends into reading this book, but no one ever reads it. You guys, trust me, read this book, it's so good. But yes, that is definitely one of my favorite romances of all time. The last one of my favorite romances that I'm gonna recommend is Top Secret by Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy. I've talked about this book a few times on my channel. It's a very short book, very fun book. These two authors are very good at writing smut. So you get your sex scenes. And this is about two guys named Luke and Keaton. Keaton has a girlfriend and him and his girlfriend decide they might wanna have a threesome. So Keaton downloads an app that's similar to Grindr where you have like profiles and you get to talk to other gay men or bisexual men in the area. And he starts talking to this guy and he does not know the true identity of this guy because they have like screen names. So he doesn't really know who he's talking to, but he's talking to this guy named Luke who he happens to be in the same fraternity with and both Keaton and Luke are fighting to be frat president and they're talking and you know, starting to develop feelings via this app, not really knowing that they actually know each other in real life. And their relationship and their like, romance is so cute. Sex scenes are fantastic. The chemistry, the storyline itself is very good. 
we really delve into looking at Luke's family. Luke's comes from like a troubled family. He has like this asshole mom and asshole brother that are just awful to him. And the boys, Keaton and Luke are so different, but just their relationship is so cute. And I always recommend this. It's a quick read. It's super cute. It has that college vibes that I really like in romance and thriller books. So you're gonna feel like you're at the university, you're living college over again. And I just absolutely adore this book and try to recommend it to all my friends because it's so good. And if you're looking for smut, Google, go on Amazon, just buy any of these books because these two authors are so good at writing smut. But yes, those are all of the romance that are my favorite that I tend to recommend to my friends. Um, I just picked a few, I have more, but those are my top favorites. All right, I have three literary fiction books that I tend to recommend to friends that are my favorite books of all time, even more so than the thrillers and the romance. I only read a handful of literary fiction books a year because they take so much out of me. Like whenever I finish a literary fiction book, I'm usually emotionally drained. I don't know how people read literary fiction back to back to back because it just takes, it's like draining. It's so good that you leave with like almost like a book hangover. Those tend to be my favorite books, tend to be just beautifully written. The stories, the characters are just like, mm, fantastic. The first one I'm gonna recommend to you could probably be classified as a romance, but I think it's just like so much more in, like it's so much deeper than a romance that I'm putting it in literary fiction. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It actually could be like historical fiction too, whatever. And this is about a girl named Evelyn Hugo. And what this book is about, we're following her entire life. The book opens up with this girl named Monique and Evelyn Hugo, who is this, I think like 70 year old famous actress, like Meryl Streep, but like even older. And she's coming to the end of her life and she wants to tell her entire life story to this girl named Monique. And Monique is like, this is huge for my career. Why are you picking me to tell your life story to? So many famous writers and journalists and authors wanted, wanted Evelyn Hugo's life story, but she chose this girl Monique and she invites Monique up to her New York penthouse to sit her down and just tell her the story of Evelyn Hugo. And then we get picture, we get um, chapters from the past starting in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and we're learning all about the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Evelyn Hugo had seven husbands, and the book is really about, you know, who is the true love of Evelyn Hugo's life? And you're just learning about all this drama that happened in Hollywood. Have I even, yeah. So she starts off in Hollywood, she becomes like this really famous actress. We're seeing how the fame gets to her, how the fame affects her relationships, her marriages, all the drama of Hollywood. I love books set in Hollywood, and just all the drama that ensues when you're in like a Hollywood situation. We're getting present day chapters with Monique, and just kind of like, she's trying to figure out like, why is Evelyn Hugo inviting me over to tell her her life? Like, it's just that that's kind of like a, a side part of the book of like, why Monique? She's, we're getting all these chapters about the love life of Evelyn Hugo. This book is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I love recommending this to friends because obviously if you're on booktube and you watch booktube videos, you this is like everyone has read the book and everyone loves it. And, but like friends who aren't big readers, I get to like push this on them and they're always like blown away and say this is the best book they've ever read. If you put a gun to my head and was like, Matthew, you have to pick one book. What is your favorite book of all time? I think out of all the categories, this book would win. I just think it's so beautiful, so well done. There's just, this book goes in directions. If you've read the book, you know that I did not think it was gonna go in. I personally didn't tell you a part of the direction that this book goes into because I think it's best not knowing that aspect of the book until you dive in. It's not a twist, but it's something that I didn't know going in. And I'm very glad I didn't know this aspect of the book until I got to the book. You find out at about page 130 what I'm talking about. So if you're reading it, if you've never read it, wait till page 130 and you'll know what I'm talking about. But this book is five out of five, amazing. I think it's turned into a movie or a TV show. I think it's in production. So we're gonna have a TV show or movie soon. Very excited. But yeah, this is probably my favorite book of all time and I highly recommend it and push it on everyone who will read it. The next literary fiction, historical fiction book that I absolutely adore, it made me cry. And if the right person, my friend's looking for a book, I would not recommend this to everyone, but if you're looking for a little bit of a historical fiction that'll make you very emotional, I recommend The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is the queen of historical fiction. And this book is set in the World War II France. And we're dealing with these two sisters, Vianne, I think that's her name, and Isabel. And both of the sisters are kind of fighting the Nazis, but in their own way. Isabel is much more taking an active role of you know trying to fight against the Nazis. And Vianne is doing her part, but it's different. She's almost trying to take in Jewish people and kind of protect them. I'm not getting too much detail about it, but we're getting chapters from, you know, what's happening with these sisters, what's happening in France during World War II, during the, you know, when the Nazis were trying to take power. This book is set in like concentration camps. You get to go there, but it's really mostly set in France and when the Nazis are occupying France and how life in France is 
changing how the Jewish people are treated in France. And this book is, oh my God, five out of five, beautiful. It made me cry. It made me cry at the very end where I don't want to, like, there's like a, everyone comes back together and like it's in the future and I just, I lost it. I cried my eyes out. This book is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I've read a few Chris and Hannah books and this one is definitely my favorite. I probably didn't do a good job explaining that, but it's about two sisters who are fighting Nazis in World War II, France. There you go. There's the gist. That probably doesn't sound exciting, but I promise I'm not like a history buff. I don't like reading World War II books, but I promise you this book will get you in your feels and make you so emotional and you will leave this book with a huge hangover because it takes a lot, a lot, a lot out of you. The last literary historical fiction book that I'm gonna recommend that's my one of my favorite books of all time, I think it was my favorite book of 2021, and that is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This was the book of the year for Book of the Month in 2017. This book is beautiful, another book that made me cry. I'm telling you, literary fiction and historical fiction books tend to be my favorite, tend to make me so emotional, but I just cannot read them back to back because they will literally deplete me of any energy or emotions because I'm, I'm, I'm so empty after reading one of these books. But this book is about a guy named Cyril and we start off in about 1950s Ireland and Ireland is run by the Catholic Church and this book is just following the life of Cyril from his conception all the way to his death. And we start off with his mother who gets pregnant out of wedlock and in 1950s Ireland, that is awful. She is blamed, she is kicked out of her little Irish village and she moves to Dublin and Cyril is born and we're just getting chapters of Cyril growing up, dealing with coming out as gay, what it's like being gay in Ireland during the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s. We get to see all of his relationships and Cyril is such a flawed character and that's why we love him. And all the side characters in this book are just so fantastic. God, this book is phenomenal. It really is probably my favorite book of all time. This book and Evelyn Hugo, they're, they're gonna fight for my favorite because those two are just so good. And we get chapters in Amsterdam. Cyril moves to New York for a few years. We deal with the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. We deal with Ireland allowing same-sex marriage, like what it's like for that process. We deal a lot with the Catholic Church and how priests used to run the country and how the priests, you know, would be anti-gay, but then all the priests were like, you know, sleeping with little boys. So it just, it just explores so many topics. It is beautiful. And I promise you, it will make you cry. I cried on the last page and I was like, just so emotionally depleted because this book is so good. But yeah, I don't recommend this to everyone because I don't think a lot of people are looking for this heavy of a book, but it is so freaking good and one of my favorite books of all time. Okay, I do have one self-help author. It's not really self-help, it's more like spirituality. And I do tend to recommend this book to my friends a lot. I read and watch videos from this spiritual teacher probably daily. He's kept me mentally stable, honestly. He is fantastic. I actually went and saw him in Vancouver to see him speak live. And that is Eckhart Tolle. And I love his books. I love his teaching. His teachings resonate with so much truth. It's not religious. Like this, I'm not, It's not like a dogma or something to teach or you have to believe. It's just more about living in the present moment, not taking the thoughts that I had in your head to be real because the thoughts in your head aren't real. And he just teaches you how to deal with recognizing all the emotions, recognizing all your thoughts, not identifying with your thoughts and your emotions and just kind of how best to find peace living as a human. I would definitely start with The Power of Now if that sounds at all interesting to you. It really does help with mental health, helps you find meaning in your life. Like I said, it's not a religion. I'm not selling you a religion, but I do when, when I have friends who are dealing with loss or dealing with mental illness or dealing with just like unsatisfied with their life. This is the book I always recommend to them. This is his first book and the one I always say, I say you start with because it's the easiest to understand. And it's kind of set up in a question and answer format. And you kind of really get to learn the teaching, learn how to incorporate it into your own life. And I promise it'll make a difference. He always says like, this will either change your life or it'll be meaningless for you. And I remember Oprah, I was in eighth grade watching Oprah, that should tell you something. And she had like a weekly class where you would read a chapter of this and Eckhart and Oprah would talk about it. And the first like two times I picked up this book, I just, it did nothing for me. It was literally, I felt like I was just reading words, nothing resonated. And he, Eckhart says like, if that's the case, that's fine. Just put it down and pick it up again one day. And I picked it up again one day and it changed my life. So if, if you read one of these books and you're like, this means nothing. Like I, I don't understand it. This is, that does nothing for me. That's totally normal. Just put it down and maybe come back to it one day, but definitely start with The Power of Now. I know this is like, this is not my normal genre of what I talk about on my channel, but I do want to share it with you if you're remotely interested in anything spiritual and it's not like woo-woo or anything like that. It's very just about 
living in the present moment, not taking your thoughts seriously, and just kind of finding joy in the simple parts of life. So those are my favorite books of all time. These are the books that I recommend to all my friends. I was so excited to film this. I'm so excited to send it to people who ask for book recommendations. I know if you watch my channel, a lot of these books are not shocking to you. If you are new here, please subscribe. Please leave a like. It really does help my videos and helps, my, helps YouTube send it out to more people. I find that the more comments I get, the more YouTube sends my video out to more people to see. So I appreciate everyone who watches my videos, likes, comments. It really does help. My channel has grown super fast in the last like month and a half, so I'm very thankful. Love what I'm doing. I love you guys so much. And thank you, and I'll see you guys in another video soon.